Hey guys, I have to tell you, I am more excited about today's video than possibly any this entire year. And that is because today is watermelon harvesting day. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over some basic information on growing watermelon. Now, I don't really have a complete growing guide for you because I didn't film any footage of the process throughout the spring, uh, mainly because I didn't think it was gonna work again. I'll fill you in a little bit more on that later, but in the video today, I'm gonna go over some basic information. We're going to be doing the harvest, and not only the harvest, but a tasting of the watermelon with Noah because he's been looking forward to this almost as much as I have. Now, let me know if you would like me to do a complete growing guide in the spring, and I will do that. I'll add it to the list. Uh, if you've been growing watermelon successfully and have tips to share, please leave those in the comments as well. Now, at the end of this video, you got to stick around because this Sunday we're going to be doing another giveaway. And so I'm going to give you some details on that at the end of this video. So don't go anywhere. Depending on where you live, watermelons can be super easy to grow or they can give you a ton of issues. Now, in my particular area of Southern California, I am in the ton of issues zone. In fact, after two years of unsuccessful attempts, this year I was semi-successful. Watermelon like it hot, like the daytime temperatures in the 80s and 90s and the nighttime temperatures in the 60s, preferably the 70s. Now our average daytime summer temperatures here are 77 degrees and nighttime temperatures 59. So therein lies the issue. Now, it's a scorcher today, it's about 93, but this is not typical. We are in the middle of a several day heat wave that's supposed to run through next Tuesday or Wednesday. Typically, we're a little too cool for what watermelon enjoy. Now, I bet that most of you are not in that situation. Now, the first year I tried growing these, uh, I had them in too much shade, so that didn't work out so well. Last year, I planted them too early and they kind of just fizzled out so I planted a second batch in July, and by October, I finally had a fruit that was golf ball size. And unfortunately, the colder weather came before it had a chance to mature. So this year, I planted it at the right time in May, put it in the sunniest spot in the garden, which right now we're under an umbrella or this would be in full sun, and I grew it vertically to get the most amount of leaves, uh, the most amount of sun. And I have two nice size watermelon. I'm so excited. Now, when you grow watermelon vertically like this, you're gonna need, first of all, a support. I'm using bamboo canes, which next year I would probably use a cattle panel, only because these are a little bit, when they get heavy, they're kind of hard to support. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw, I had a pretty successful post about using some masks that we weren't using as slings for the watermelon and they outgrew those pretty quickly. And so I ended up taking a square of like fleece row cover and I just cut a big square, bigger than you think you need, wrapped it in there kind of like a little knapsack and tied the four corners together. And then I got one of these heavy duty clamps or clips and clipped them to this teepee. And it's working pretty well. Although next year, like I said, I think I will use the cattle panel. So another tip would be on watering. Now, next to heat, watermelon love water. It's in the name. They suck it up as fast as you can give it to them and they store it in their, their flesh. Seven to 10 days before harvest, you want to withhold water. So I took up the drip, the drip tubes, moved them aside so that this would get less water over the last 10 days. And what that does is just like in tomatoes, it concentrates the sweetness and the sugars inside the fruit. Now, if you live in a cool summer climate, you definitely want to do this because if nighttime temperatures are in the 60s, definitely in the 50s, uh, you're going to have a problem with sweetness and color inside your watermelon. It might look pale and be kind of bland. So I'm hoping that's not the case. Our nighttime temperatures have been in the 60s lately. Um, so, and, and withholding the water, I'm hoping I'm going to get a good flavor. Now, I believe these are about ready to harvest. Actually, I think the bottom one down here is ready. It's a little bit bigger. Now, there are three ways to know if a watermelon is ripe. One is weight, two is sound, and three is tendril. 
This variety is Sugar Baby. It's a more compact variety. The fruit only gets to about eight to 12 pounds. So let's see how what this is. About eight pounds. The next thing to look for or listen to is the sound it makes when you tap it or thump it. You wanna have a deeper, hollow sound. The last way to tell is to see if the tendrils, the last tendril before the melon itself, is either green or brown and dead. And if it's still green, like this top one here, then it's not ready. If it's brown and dry and crispy, like this one here on the bottom, then we're good to go. So if you're well, you're kind of within the weight range that it's supposed to be, and you'll look at the variety on the seed packet or on the website or the catalog, you'll know about how big it's supposed to be. If it's in that range, it sounds good, and it's got the dead tendril right above it, it's time to harvest. So I think it's time to harvest the bottom one. So we're just gonna clip it right above the, uh, the fruit and below the vine. Okay, I got Noah with us. Hi. I am so excited. Are you excited? Yeah. I know. We've been looking at this for like several weeks and we couldn't wait for the day and today is the day. So I think the last time we did a taste test was the dragon fruit that I was in. Yeah. And that was two years ago. Wow. Yeah. I, okay. I want to cut it. I'm going to have to stand up to get some leverage. Can I cut it? No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I hope this is not a fail. Oh. Whoa, be careful. It doesn't look like a fail. It doesn't? No. Do you see red? Yeah. It's always a good sign when you see red. Okay, here we go. Ready? Da da da. Well. <laughs> not the best. It's a little bit pale, as I thought it might be because of our temperatures. But we're going to try to taste it and see. I've never had a sugar. It smells good. We should get some salt. Okay, tell me about this. That's a very good. I grew up having salt on watermelon. I don't know if that's a southern thing. If you from the south, let me know if that's a thing. You from the north, let me know if you've never heard of that. And that sounds crazy. Can we get some salt? We can get some salt. Hold on. Okay. Let's make sure it even tastes good. Okay. <laughs> we should do a taste test before and after salt. Yeah. I'm gonna stab somebody, probably near you, since we're the only ones here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait. Oh. So. Up. All right, you be first. Why? And be honest. If it's no good, we know why it's no good, because we just don't get hot enough here. Really? Yeah. It's pretty hot today. It's hot today, but for the last several weeks it has not. Been. Okay, ready? Let's say one, two, three. It's actually not bad. It doesn't taste as bad as it looks. It's not as sweet as I would like. All right, we're gonna try it with some salt now. I put way. I already know I'm gonna put way too much. Mm. That's good. Let me know what you think. What do you think? It's sweeter with the salt. Yep. Okay, one more thing I gotta show you. My cousin, two years ago when I grew them the first time unsuccessfully, my cousin gave me a gift. Cousin Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. One of these. Has anybody seen one of these little uh, Whirly McGig watermelon cutters? At first I thought it was a total gimmick until I tried it. And I'm gonna link this down below because if you're lucky enough to get one of these and you like watermelon, watch this. Perfectly cubed watermelon. It's a little bit easier when you have a longer watermelon. This one's a little bit short. I'm not a big fan of the seeds. No. Makes your job of cubing watermelon a lot easier. So anyway, I uh, I don't know. I don't know whether I should try it next year or not. I'm not sure if it's worth the space in a small space garden. I always say that and I end up growing them anyway. So we'll see. 
If you guys want a complete growing guide next year and you do live in a warmer client where you might have some better luck and an easier time with this, then let me know and I will put that together for next spring. Are you sitting there spitting the seeds out on camera? <laughs> <laughs> ah, kids. Okay, so I told you at the beginning of the video that at the end of the video, I would let you know about a giveaway for our next video on Sunday. And I'm excited to be doing another giveaway. It was really fun last time with Neptune's Harvest, but we've got a completely new one this time. Not just one giveaway, but three. And each of you has three chances to win each one. And you know, if you've watched me for any length of time, I've been preaching drip irrigation. Watering from below, and that's the easiest way to do it. Now, a lot of you have tried it out and, you know, took the plunge and written in and told me that it's the best thing you've ever done for your garden. And I absolutely agree for my garden as well. I put it off for years because I was intimidated. I thought it would be difficult and expensive. And Sunday's video will show you it's none of those things. I'm gonna break it down step by step, piece by piece, so that if you decide to take the plunge, you'll know it's gonna be the best decision you ever made for your garden and it's gonna be super simple to put together. So make sure you watch Sunday's video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and hit the post notification bell. And you should follow my dad on Instagram. It'll be right up there. Right there. And see you guys next time. Bye. See ya.